another review from the Brotherhood of Gaming.com of a Mega Man game. This time, it's Mega Man 8. Hell yeah! And I've actually got a lot of history when it comes to Mega Man 8, because believe it or not, Mega Man 8 was the first classic Mega Man game that I've ever played. Hmm. Well, I guess it makes sense then why you wanted to be involved in this review. Yeah, not to mention I stole it from an unlucky poor soul. <laughs> so, but, whoa, wait, whoa, whoa! Oh, was that not clear? <laughs> whoa, 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 time out, time out, time out. Review paused. How'd this happen? Long story short, I was hanging out at the park when I saw this copy of Mega Man 8 lying on the ground next to an open backpack. Now, I, you could say I didn't know any better back then. I totally did. And I just saw a character that looked like uh, Mega Man, and I was just like, ooh, I, I would like that. And I just kind of sort of took it. Now, I'm not saying it was an okay thing to do. <laughs> Come on, I was a kid back then. And I do feel bad about swiping someone's copy and ruining their day. But in my defense, it really shouldn't have been laying around anyway. Anybody could have grabbed it. But in any event, that is how my career with the original Mega Man started. With thievery. Hey! I said I feel bad, alright? I mean, it was a long time ago. I was a kid. And if you're the guy watching that I happen to have stolen this from, please don't hunt me down and kill me. Here, you, here, you can have it back. Anyway, here's our review of Mega Man 8. So, Mega Man 8 represents the 10th anniversary title for the classic Mega Man series, and for it, Capcom decided to go all out on this special occasion, as this was the character's debut on the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Ah, the Saturn. Such a missed opportunity. In any event, the 8th entry for the series took things into overdrive, with better graphics, more expressive animation, more gameplay options, and full voice acting with cutscenes! How cool is that? You'll pay for this insult. I'll be back. Dr. Light, what is the problem? A strange meteor has fallen to Earth just a while ago. Must recover all the energy immediately, Mega Man. <laughs> hey, shut up! This is awesome! <laughs> it is! All right, look, it, in its defense, it was the first time we had an English dub in a Mega Man game, and I fully admit that I enjoyed it back then, and you know what? Screw it, I still enjoy it to this day. Well, there's no accounting for taste. Quiet, you! Anyway, the last entry in the franchise, Mega Man 7, was the first one that really started to flesh out the story for this game, with cutscenes and plenty of dialogue. But as mentioned earlier, Mega Man 8 really kicks it up. The game opens up with two creatures engaged in a battle to the death out in the far reaches of space before making their way to planet Earth. Meanwhile, apparently it's Tuesday, so Mega Man is battling it out with Bass in the city, before Roll intervenes. Back home, Dr. Light sends Mega Man out to an island to investigate a strange source. Upon arriving there, Mega Man finds Dr. Wily making his escape from the island with a purple orb on hand. Before he can chase after him, Mega Man finds a critically damaged robot laying on the ground. Concerned for his well-being, he informs Dr. Light so that he can pick him up. Mega Man then wipes out four robot masters who just happen to be there for some reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, it's not really explained why suddenly there's a new batch, but like I said, it's Tuesday. In any case, these lights seem to be powered up by the same mysterious energy that Dr. Wily found earlier. Light instructs Mega Man to get the energy before Dr. Wily can use any more of it. Meanwhile, the robot that Dr. Light was helping comes too. He sees the energy that the Robot Masters had been using and discovers that his enemy still lives on in the form of this energy. In a rage, this new robot leaves the lab immediately, with Mega Man giving chase. He tracks down the mysterious robot, and after a quick skirmish and a talk with Proto Man, Mega Man heads toward Dr. Wily's new tower. Lucky us, we're all in the same spot. Mega Man is quickly ambushed by a giant robot and appears to be in deep <laughs> After an excessive amount of screaming, Mega Man is saved by the robot he was pursuing. He introduces himself as Duo, and he reveals his sole purpose is to track down and destroy the evil energy which has now fallen to Dr. Wily's hand. Wily being resourceful has enabled a huge barrier which is preventing Duo from entering the tower to retrieve it. So it is up to Mega Man to destroy the four remaining robot masters to disable the blockage. With these nuisances out of the way, the barrier is no more and Mega Man marches forward, defeating Henchman and Bass along the way. Soon enough, Mega Man meets up with Wily, and for the eighth time, but who's counting, 
takes the mad scientist down. But the last bit of dark energy manages to infect Mega Man, giving Dr. Wily his chance to bail once again. Somehow we manage to get outside and, thankfully, Duo arrives in time to cure Mega Man, saving him as he sees that Mega Man is a true warrior for justice. Mega Man wakes up in Light's lab, back with his family, relieved that all is well. He then meets up with Proto Man, who gives him one last message of thank you from Duo, who has returned to outer space now that his mission has been completed. And that pretty much wraps up the story portion of Mega Man 8. This certainly was a more involved story than your average fare. The game does, in my estimation, a nice job in really fleshing out the characters and the world that they live in. There's almost a childlike wonder to the storytelling in the game, especially when you compare it to the slightly darker tales that is Mega Man X. To me, it does work well. The voice acting was also a nice touch. Yes, 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 I know, it's not commonly considered good amongst its peers, but still, I like it. But where is Dr. Wily? That's a good question. We may be able to locate another energy emission from the radar room. When we find that media, we'll find Dr. Wowie. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know. It does sound like they really had a short amount of time to complete it. Hey, we have about 25 minutes before the game is released. We gotta get this done and over with. But I just flubbed my line. That's nah, okay, these dumb kids won't notice. You know, despite all of that, it just works and adds a bit of charm to the story. And as a Mega Man fan, I do appreciate it. Cheese and all. So with that being said, let's move on to the gameplay. Mega Man 8 has quite an interesting reputation amongst its peers from what I can gather. Not that I care, but the general consensus either don't like this game for the obvious reasons, or they just kind of dismiss it as a forgettable entry despite being the 10th anniversary game. Naturally, we always advise others to try a game for themselves so that they can have their own opinion. But clearly you guys want to know what we think, so here we go. I don't know. So far it looks pretty good. Graphically, the game stands out naturally from its previous entries. The visuals make the world feel really vibrant and lived in. I really like the Frostman stage with the winter city in the background, with the gorgeous lights on the buildings, and the cars traveling up and down the highways. Just these little subtle details can add much to the game in the long run for me. I agree. Even though as a PS1 game it's not going overboard to push the limits of what the console can do aside from its music and FMVs, what it does present as far as level layout goes, it really does deliver on what Mega Man games have been known for, and it kind of finds a happy medium in between the new and the old. I mean, as far as creative visuals go. The backgrounds certainly can be pretty. So we start the game like before in Mega Man 7. We have an intro stage to give us the feel for how Mega Man controls and gets us started. Now thankfully Mega Man's still rocking the same control scheme and move we've come to know from his charge shot and slide ability. One new feature the game gives us right away is the Mega Ball. That's, that's kind of surprising, usually you gotta earn new powers like these. Well in any case the Mega Ball is exactly what it sounds like. An ability where Mega Man can shoot a soccer ball with some C4 planted inside. Mega Man can then kick this at any obstacles and enemies. What's neat is that the ball can ricochet off the walls and ceilings, so this can come really in handy for specific situations and helpful with certain mini bosses. <laughs> That's right. The Mega Ball has some situational uses, and some of those are in ways the game doesn't even tell you about. I'll get back to that in a moment. Also, like in Mega Man 7, you can return to Light's lab for upgrades to help give Mega Man an edge in levels. However, the way currency works is a bit different. No longer will you be farming bolts off of enemies in stages. Nope, this time there are literally only a handful of bolts in the entire game, and they are stationed in very specific locations that either you have to find or figure out how to reach. Some are definitely easier than others, and the game does go out of its way to just give quite a few of them to you. But there are some that can be real head scratchers if you plan to go out of your way to get all of them. Some of them you won't even be able to obtain until later in the game when you acquire a new Robot Master's power, and then return to a previous stage to use that power to access them. Here is the example with the Mega Ball from earlier. It has another function where Mega Man can sort of do a high jump off of the ball as it explodes. You can, if you are clever enough, manipulate the explosion to continuously jump, sort of like the Morph Ball trick from the Metroid series. But honestly, I wouldn't try it. That being said, the Mega Ball can help you reach some of those high areas, and definitely some of those out of reach bolts. Also similar to Mega Man 7 again, so get used to that. 
The game only allows you to take on four of the eight robot masters first. Clown Man, Grenade Man, Frost Man, and Tengu Man. After beating them, the game goes into a halfway phase where more of the story is fleshed out. This is where we have to chase down Duo and learn a little bit about him. The stage in which you tail Duo is pretty short, but it does have a couple of bolts lying around for grabs, so those are never a bad thing. Duo definitely is not a hard fight once you get to him. Really, you just gotta damage him enough for him to back off and realize you aren't the enemy. Proto Man shows up to ask what's going on, but that's about it. After the intermission point, the next four Robot Masters become available as well as newer upgrades from Dr. Light's shop. This time you face Sword Man, Search Man, Astro Man, and Aquaman. Yeah! So if you've been hunting and saving those bolts, now would be a good time to use them. Personally, I found that the laser to be a good upgrade as it's got a nice long beam that tends to linger and wreck just about anything it touches. The other upgrades like being able to shoot multiple buster shots with a single button press and the ability to shoot up to five at once are also really helpful for mowing down enemies. Honestly though, unlike in Mega Man 7, I can't say the upgrades in Mega Man 8 are all that necessary though. Ah, so you noticed it too, huh? Yep, here is one of the more interesting complaints about Mega Man 8. The game is way too easy. Frankly, this is the perfect classic Mega Man game for a beginner. Because the game really does, again, go out of its way to give you just about every advantage. Health drops are plentiful, and the damage Mega Man takes from enemies is not really polarizing. You could quite literally run your way through a stage not paying attention to your health and probably be fine. Sure, bottomless pits can be a problem, but if you know how to press the jump button, that really shouldn't be an issue. Honestly, if you are going to die in this game, I can pretty much guarantee 9 times out of 10 it's going to be from a fall. Another benefit is when you die, all of your power-ups are refilled. Never in this Mega Man outing did I ever feel like I was in serious danger that I needed to hardcore focus. Or really try that hard. I mean, Mega Man games aren't usually known for insane difficulty in the first place, save for a couple of outings, but wow, this game is downright unfair to the villains. Beating all of them is easy enough with just the Mega Buster alone, but if you came with their weaknesses on hand, you won the moment you set foot in the room. Honestly, after two decades of playing this game, I cannot recall ever losing to any of these bosses. Some of the weaknesses are so downright broken, it's embarrassing. Seriously? Okay, so the bosses may not present much of a challenge, but what about the stages leading up to them? Clown Man's got a pretty neat stage designed around a stage hazard gimmicks. Kind of like a funhouse. Also, I've noticed that some of the out of reach bolts that I thought I could get to, but wait, where's my rush coil and rush jet? Speaking of which, where's my E tanks? Well, since we've already mentioned how easy the game is, I guess having E-Tanks would have been overkill. As for Rush, well, he's still in the game, however, his uses have been modified. After defeating some mini-bosses throughout the stages, you will acquire a new Rush ability. An ability that you can only use once per stage, or per life if you've managed to kick the bucket. These range from the Rush Cycle, a Rush Air Bombing, a Rush Health Bombing, and a random rush where the dog will show up and either give you something useful or just take a nap. Gee, thanks. While I can understand the use of the air raid and the health drops, the rush cycle, while cool looking, I can't seem to find any real use for outside of nabbing a couple of out-of-reach bolts. Mega Man is an action-based platformer with a lot of sliding, climbing, and well-timed platforming. This sort of playstyle doesn't really go well with high-speed utilities with wheels and slippery traction. Not to mention, you can't climb or do much of anything else while you're on the darn motorcycle, so there's little to zero places that you can get any real use out of it. Besides that one or two hard-to-reach screws just lying around. But still, it's no rush yet. 
Uh, speaking of which, the Rush Jet is still in the game, but this time Capcom decided to get a little more theatrical with it. Yeah, indeed they did. In Tango Man's level, the majority of the stage will have Mega Man flying on Rush while taking out an onslaught of enemies. Occasionally, a helpful balloon can pop up and allow one of Mega Man's helpful allies to come to your assistance and fight alongside the Blue Bomber, ranging from Otto, who fires a bazooka, Beat the Brood, who f***s up anything he touches, Flip Top Eddie, who drops bombs, and Rush, who can shoot a spread shot. All in all, it's cool that they are there. However, the one downside is it's pretty random if you get the opportunity to even see much of them, as the balloons that they appear in seem to rarely pop up, especially in my case. Frostman stage has this snowboarding section, which frankly, either you have quick reflexes for, or you don't. If you are good at jumping and sliding and doing it fast as you are told, you will probably be okay. But this might be one of those areas where trial and error really does rear its ugly head for you. Remember when I said 9 out of 10 deaths in this game were going to be from pitfalls? Here's why. Astro Man stage is pretty creative in my opinion because it has this never-ending labyrinth sort of thing going on, which you have to navigate and press the right switches to exit. It's not too difficult to figure out, but it is a neat change of pace instead of, you know, the simple running to the right. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Mega Man can swim in this game. Uh, okay, uh, does that do anything else? Nope. As you reach the Wily stages, this is where things really start to pick up a bit. The first stage is a long level, which puts your reflexes again to the test. This is not one of those stages where you want to have input lag, let me tell you. The end boss is the only one where the Mega Ball from the start of the game is mandatory. Not too hard of a boss, but can be tricky with those angles. The second Wily stage for the most part is another Rush Jet section where you face off against some kind of plain robot. This fight can be a little long, even with your four allies. Well, that is until you realize that Astro Crush demolishes this thing in seconds. The third stage is where you have a run in with Bass. Suddenly, in terms of story, he doesn't have any real purpose other than being another foe for you to fight, but even then he just comes and goes. He's also not too hard to defeat either, as he's like most of the bosses in this game, and he has fairly simple attack patterns. Still, I never get tired of hearing him shout, FEEL IT! Still, Bass was only the halfway point of this stage. The real end boss is... No, 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 come back. You can't pitch out like this. Come on, believe in you. I believe in you. It's just the yellow devil. You got this. He's a pansy. He's a pushover. You can beat him. You can take him. <sighs> All right, you're right. Even the yellow devil, who usually is a force to be reckoned with, is a little more than a joke here. He's really weak to the Thunderclaw. Anyway, as usual, the final stage is a showdown with all eight Robot Masters again, whom I'm sure you all will have no problem steamrolling over. And then it's time to face Dr. Wily. Honestly, Dr. Wily can potentially be the only challenge in the game. Don't get me wrong, it's not insanely hard or anything, but because he does have a handful of quick attacks, and you gotta fight his two forms back to back, you only have one chance to heal up in between with the rush health bombing because again, there's no E-Tanks. Still, with some quick maneuvers, Dr. Wily will go down easy enough. And that is Mega Man 8. Now, before we close things off, I do want to mention that we also have the Sega Saturn version of Mega Man 8 here with us. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the difference? Well, by and large, not a whole lot. However, the Sega Saturn version does still have some exclusive features that, unfortunately, to this day, still only exist on the Sega Saturn. During the halfway point while chasing down Duo, Mega Man can run into Cut Man, who challenges him for revenge for what happened in the first game. In Search Man stage, Mega Man will also run into Wood Man from Mega Man 2, who also seeks revenge on Dr. Wily's behalf. So already that's two extra optional bosses exclusive to this version. Another feature, for some reason, is that Tango Man's music in his stage has been changed. For, again, some reason. Huh. The last feature is the bonus menu at the title screen that shows off some more artwork by fans with Dr. Wily commenting on it, as well as official artwork and sound test goods. Beyond that, it's pretty much the same game. It's still a shame that this one never got the HD treatment. Huh. That's very interesting. Now what about the music? Well, for the most part, I found it to be some good Mega Man fare. Here's a few good tracks I liked.
the day, Mega Knight 8 for its 10th anniversary title is not a bad outing at all. I still found it to be a good entry to the series and enjoyed a playthrough, even if it wasn't nearly as challenging as previous games, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. As long as it was a fun ride, I can still say it was worth the venture. Agreed. I too still find myself popping it in a couple of times a year just to give it a quick playthrough. It's a game that you can finish under two hours with relative ease and still have a good time. If I had to guess why they made this one so easy, maybe it's because being advertised as an anniversary game, newcomers like myself were liable to see it and wonder if it was worth a try. So they made it a simpler game for novices to get into without busting their chops with a ton of trial and error. Still, the game with its vibrant colors, pretty cool backgrounds, FMV cutscenes, <laughs> well worth a laugh, still were great to see in this game. I would definitely recommend this game for Blue Bomber beginners. Or, you know, if you just want to have a quick and easy adventure. This is one outing I'm glad I played. Well, there you have it. There's a review of Mega Man number eight. I'd like to thank Will for joining me on this little review. My name is Eugene Morris. I am William Morris, and after all, this is my channel. <laughs> Good point. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to join me next time, however, when I take a look at Mega Man 9. Whoa, hold on a second. Mega Man 9? That didn't come out for a whole 10 years. What else is there? I'm glad you asked. Uh, here, hold this. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, there you go. Super Nintendo. Yeah. Mega Man Bass. 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 Oh yeah. Get ready to have some real fun this time. This is a man's Mega Man. Man. Mega. Next time, Mega Man and Bass. I thought it was Bass. Are we chilling on the Bass? Are we cool with the Bass? I thought it was Bass. Forte? Hey there everyone, did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff. Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit chat about the games that we love so much. Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.